young girl, I had an undeniable talent for rebellion. The good news, I have been and still am a rebel with a heart, a rebel with a cause. And my number one rebel tool throughout my life has been the simple word, why? Questioning habits, questioning things take it for granted, questioning systems. Now this talent has got me into much trouble throughout my life from a very really early age on, getting kicked out of classes in school, later on getting kicked out of the school, and later on in life getting fired from jobs for asking uncomfortable questions for challenging systems and for speaking up and out for myself and for others who could not take the risk to do so. Now, growing older and a little bit wiser, I have learned that I can actually make even better use of my talent by not only questioning things, but by proposing solutions and alternatives, by turning my rebel talent into an agent of change talent and by making change happen. And it's this talent that has led me on the journey of tackling an issue as audacious as decolonizing technology for good. So let me share my journey with you. My world is the tech for good sector. Tech, technology, standing for the robotics and AI industry. Good, social good, standing for the international aid and development sector, made up of international organizations, UN affiliates, and international NGOs. Now, for the sake of this story, let's give these two sectors a name so that they have a personality and we can better relate to them and understand them. Let's call the tech sector, let's call tech Tina, and let's call the social good sector, let's call good Gloria. Tina and Gloria have been raised in the global north. Their education has followed the value and perceptions that are in line with our northern systems. Now, both have their flaws, but they're good at heart, respectful citizens. However, both are also colonizers, not willingly, but parts of systems that educates them to act in a top-down way and that perpetuates ideologies like the North needs to help the South and is best place to do so, and the North knows better what's best. Now for Tina, being an unwilling colonizer is part of her business model, a way of making profit. However, for Gloria, remember, she represents the international aid and development sector. Just the sheer thought of being called a colonizer makes her shriek. It goes against all her values. Tina, Gloria and me, we live on the same planet, this beautiful blue planet that has become a lot more fragile lately and that is facing unprecedented challenges from a pandemic to a climate crisis to extreme inequalities. Problems are growing at an alarmingly fast rate, even more so in the global south. And we know that we have to tackle them a lot faster, a lot smarter. Now, Tech Tina has a suitcase full of technologies, very fitting technologies like drones and AI that provide the speed and scale needed to tackle these problems. The issue is she thinks she can save the planet by herself. And if ever she needs help, she will reach out to her friend from the North, Gloria, so that together they can go to work, travel South, save the world. Now, by traveling south, packing up their bags, importing their technologies to the south, the issue is that they very much follow a technocentric and top-down approach. The issue is also that problems in the global south are not just technical problems. So solutions cannot be technical solutions alone. Solutions need to be social, inclusive, diverse, and plural. So what would be a good answer? The way with their approach that would be much more inclusive, much more efficient and much more adapted would for them to be handing over their technology and knowledge to local experts. So that these local experts who have the lived experience, who understand the context and who have the local knowledge can implement their own solutions. Now, technology is ready. So are the local experts to take over a leadership role. Somebody's missing. 
basically two things. First, access. Access to the most fitting technologies, access to the knowledge on how to best use them, and access to opportunities. Second, a shift in power, a change in systems that shifts the power from the global, the power Tech Tina and Good Glory hold, to local experts to allow for radical inclusion and give these local experts the leadership opportunities they seek to implement their own solutions. Now, I don't talk about systems change lightly. I know what it means to be part of systems. I have been Tina for the most part of my work life, having worked in startups and tech corporations and having faced these systems, including the lively drive drone sector in Switzerland. I also have been Gloria, setting up and managing conservation projects in Africa and Latin America. I also know what it means to change. I have a personal experience with change. I drastically changed over the last 15 years. This thanks to the fact that I had to face some serious health issues and that I had to fight for my own life. So living a life death experience, not once, but twice, has given me a, a lot of time for introspection. Personal investment and external help have allowed me not only to get back on my two feet, but actually to change. This crisis allowed me to change, to change for the better and to embrace that change. So I perfectly well know that humans can change and Tina and Gloria can also follow a transformative journey, just like me. The tech sector and the social good sector and the systems that fuel them can evolve, they can fit the needs of today's world. So now, Let's rethink the future. Let's hop on a time machine and let's jump to the future to see what the future of decolonized tech for good could actually look like. So our destination date is September 25, 2025. Now, what does the future look like? Wow, the world has changed. Our planet has already shifted slightly and it's possibly not just the world, it's possibly our perception of the world. It is amazing. Systems change is on the way. Let's check in with Tina and Gloria and see where they stand. So Tina, she had a burnout. And through many sessions with a psychiatrist, she learned that letting go of control and shifting her power actually is even way more successful path than the technocentric top-down path that she was on before. She also has learned that Humility hasn't killed anyone. As for Gloria, she had a nervous breakdown and she engaged in a lot of meditation and embraced a new philosophy called the shift of power and has learned that she can fulfill a new role as a mentor and supporter instead of thinking that she's the best fit for local jobs. Wow, look at the Flying Labs network. That's the network that I have created together with my two co-founders. Our organization is setting up local knowledge hubs like those around the planet. When in the past, remember where we were before, there were only 30 of these Flying Labs. Today, it's 130 of those all across the global south. Amazing to see these local knowledge hubs are run by local experts. And these local experts uh, lead local projects, thousands of local projects each year. And uh, today, Gloria and Tina, they collaborate with these local experts. They hand over the technologies. They also hand over the opportunities so that these experts can run these projects locally. For example, Flying Labs, they lead projects in Nepal to use drones to transport medicine to remote villages or map devastating floods in the city of the cars. They support local smallholder farmers in Ivory Coast to help them protect their land and their tidal deeds. Flying Labs also train thousands of local experts each year. For example, staff members of the Ministry of Environment uh, to help them introduce drones into their work and protect mangroves or indigenous communities in the Amazon 
to allow them to use drones to gather data to fight illegal mining. Each of these activities improves the lives of hundreds, if not thousands, of local community members. Now imagine all these new trained local experts teaming up, creating their own companies, becoming entrepreneurs, creating jobs, scaling their social impact regionally. Wow, imagine that changes the life of millions of people. At the same time, these local knowledge hubs that you've seen before, the Flying Labs Network, they tell their stories, share their experiences, they inspire others to follow their lead and to do the same thing, to they create the social movement. This impacts the lives of hundreds of millions of people. Now, let's keep this amazing picture in our mind. And let's go back. Let's return to today, October 23, 2020. With the model our organization is creating for this Flying Labs Network, we already have a solution to decolonize technology for good and to change the system. So why wait until 2025? Let's not only rethink the future, let's change it today. We have a solution. And with your help, we can spread the word even faster and further and decolonize technology for good together. Thank you very much.